Essentially, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to create a new generation of designers. And that requires for us to rethink everything. Oftentimes, when, uh, when I have a conversation with faculty and with students about how we are structured and how our programs are structured and so on, I say that I don't believe in classrooms and I don't believe in courses. Now, this is a very unusual thing for a director of a school to say. Well, there is a general problem with how traditional classrooms are set up and also how the courses are being structured. This is a model that has been developed 150 years ago at the time of the industrial era. Since then, everything has changed in the way we interact and the way we communicate with each other. Now, the original system, how the uh, classroom was being staged and how the whole concept with the education was being developed was to replicate the workspace environment of the day, which was the factory setting. At a time that was quite revolutionary and quite um, future forward concept, it was about getting the workforce of the future prepared for the workspace environments of that future and that was the future, the factory model. Now, Everything was set up to replicate that space from the way that uh, you have a row of uh, desks and each student has a chair and a desk and there is a person in front of the classroom, the, the professor, the lecturer, monitoring how everyone is performing, making sure that everyone is performing up to the same standard. All of that was supposed to replicate that model. It was supposed to train people to operate in a particular environment in a particular way. Even the grading and the marking that was used, that we still even use today, derives from that model. Grade A, grade B, grade C, to measure the quality of production in a factory. We no longer operate in that model. The way we engage, the way we interact, the way industry operates today has changed. There is a very interesting similarity between educational spaces and uh, workspace solutions. So we need to adapt and we need to create an entirely different environment. Uh, educational environments that will set the tone for the workspaces of the future. We cannot teach people to be creative in an environment that are designed to prevent creativity. This series of projects that we have done have been developed with that purpose in mind. We are trying to reinvent first the educational environment that we provide to our students and second to prototype workplace models for the future. What makes the class different is uh, the opportunity to actually not just design, but actually design and fabricate. I know a lot of students have, in design and architecture school, assignments where they're just designing something. And there's no reality in terms of how things come together, how details are uh, figured out, how you make it what you have to do in the shop to actually produce it. And this is one grand opportunity to, to not just you know, have, a, have a student understand their design from a drawing or from a 3D model, but to actually um, have to think about its execution, going to the shop, figuring out the materials it's gonna be made out of, understanding how these materials go together and using the tools to actually make that happen. And so that's uh, a unique opportunity that most students don't get. Starting last year, we kind of we wrote a prompt essentially around starting a brand. So section one became the name of the brand, just being like literally just what the class is called. The weird thing is also professionally, I don't tend to do team projects. <laughs> we take these students who've never done a team project and we do a class-wide team. So we have like 28 or 29 students all working together on one thing. It's just chaotic environment <laughs> that works out, I think, pretty well. Um, and 
hopefully the students get a kick out of it. I think there was like a lot of stress and anxiety because it's something we had never experienced before, but it's really turning into something great. It was kind of stressful at first. It's our first like group project ever. Like we've never done partner projects and then all of a sudden it's like 25 or 30 of us in a room. Like, and so it was a little bit crazy, but it's also really exciting and way different. All the like interpersonal things really develops our ability to communicate as designers more than any other kind of studio we've had. Because we all have an equal say in like what's going on, which is both challenging and awesome opportunity. So that's been really fun to kind of figure out with our classmates, how to communicate, how to get ideas out, and how to delegate responsibility. It's a huge thing. Our studio is like really democratic, so like to the point of like anarchy and chaos <laughs> at times, you know? So it's been interesting to watch how that like affects the design process. You know, we don't have like a head of design who's like pointing at things being like, this is going in the collection and this isn't. Like even John and Steven don't really want yeah, that no role. One, like, no, no one, one wants, wants that, that role. And I think it's really an interesting dynamic to see like, what roles students naturally take on. Some students agree to way too many roles, you know? Some students don't agree to any, and you're kind of like, hey, you know, we, you, know you can do this. I find that time and time again is it's like, if you allow them to do things the way they want and you're there as like a coach, it works so much better than if you're there as like a teacher laying it out. It's really nice to have three professors that are like kind of all working um, with us and none of them are like, kind of like overpowering or anything. We have John, who has design background, Steven, architecture, and Joko, who's done so much. <laughs> He's done everything. And they're three great leaders who all play off each other very well. And then the cast of characters in our class. I think, I like to believe that it is a pretty unique group of people who are all really passionate about this project. That uh, diverse array of opinions and views and experiences and expertise sort of um, allows the students to hear more than one voice and hear more than one way of um, looking at a problem and, uh, and bounce more than one solution to that problem. It becomes a dialogue and that dialogue opens up into a larger conversation with the whole class. We've worked with quite a lot of industry partners. Some of the leading uh, companies in the world in workspace solutions. Uh, companies such as uh, Hayward, Herman Miller, Steelcase. So to get an outsider's perspective on this stuff is really interesting. And to get people's input that aren't a part of this project is really important. Our guest today was Craig from IKEA. He's the lead interior designer there. We learned a lot, obviously, about IKEA and some of their reasoning behind what they do. But I think for me it was also really interesting because this is the first time that as a group we've started to really work together. Um, so even just getting to know my classmates a little bit better and seeing how people view the types of furniture in the spaces I think will be really beneficial as we um, move forward as a group and in this group project. Um, it was kind of fun just to have a little bit of bonding over the staging setup. So. And we did a workshop on staging, so how you can have a whole collection in a certain space that you're working with and how you can fit everything in. So it was really beneficial for us to kind of pick his brain and understand a little bit more of the reasoning behind why things are staged so that when we get to our final designs, we can display our work in the best way possible. My main function here is to work with students using our software. So one, I support their use of it by you know, putting on workshops, by doing trainings, um, uh, pointing them towards resources we have available for them to learn it and use it. But then also I take back feedback. So um, you know, our old CEO, Carl Bass, was adamant about knowing what people hated about our software. That way we could fix those holes and then make it a better uh, product. And then we went to Hayworth and presented to the um, CEO there. And we're gonna do it on this huge wall they had, what was it yeah, called? It was like Bluescape? Bluescape. It's like a wall size screen. It was one of like... room, or one side of the wall in the room was like a big TV. It was yeah. like this really impressive thing. But we were trying to put the presentation up on that, and it was like totally not working. And this guy only had like so much time that we could talk to him. But what we ended up doing was like just gathering around a laptop, and everyone was like kind of kneeling. Yeah. And it was, it was totally in line with the vibe of the studio we were designing, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was yeah. like, 
very collaborative and it's very conversational. We have to make this stuff so that it can actually be produced and the people from Versteel are ultimately making the steel parts. They came and they were awesome. They're super knowledgeable people that were just telling us like, yes, that'll work, no, that won't, but here's how you can do that. Um, so that was awesome. I was really impressed. And their presentations, uh, very professional. I mean, for, I shouldn't say for students, it's, again, impressive. I don't know how else to say it. Um, good work, uh, a lot of thought put into it a lot of effort put into it, and I think they're gonna come up with a really good project. I think also the idea of collaboration between architecture and industrial design is really interesting for these people outside of DAP, because mm -hmm. I think when they went to school, it was like a very different thing. It's like, you're designing for your own individual work, you're putting it out for yourself, to promote yourself, and in this case, we're designing for our friends in this building, Yeah. and we're designing with our friends in this building, and it's just a totally different experience, it's a lot more and it makes yeah. me feel like um, I'm doing this for better reasons now. <laughs> yeah, like we're part of a community. Too. Yeah, totally. It's for like sure. a huge team. Yeah. <laughs> Family, a team. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I, de I definitely never thought that I would have a furniture collection I worked on showed in New York, so that's really exciting. <laughs> Definitely never thought that would happen. It was a great experience um, exhibiting in New York and being a part of the New York uh, Design Week. From the exhibition space to uh, the website to the Instagram campaign, everything is designed by the students and it's all cohesive and there's a kind of thread that links all of these different uh, assignments together. We essentially signed up for this class like not doing any work for ourselves and we have this like amazing opportunity set up for us. And it's cool to be able to say that we won the award last year as a school. Especially after seeing last year's class go and seeing how well they did, it just pushes us to want to be that. Mm -hmm. The first time we went, uh, the ID students were there and they were literally headhunted on the spot. I think they were actual jobs that were found by their experience at ICFF. This is such a comprehensive design project where we go through every step of the process. Um, I feel like I'm gonna apply that and apply this process to all my projects moving forward. I definitely am, feel more like ready to take on new roles. Mm -hmm. Trusting people to help me with things too. Yeah. So it's not just like, it's not all on me. Mm -hmm. So utilizing other people's skill sets to kind of fill those gaps. I think I'll be a lot more willing to um, go to others for their opinions and listen to others um, and not just be so siloed. I think in the future, like purposefully deciding to work together and collaborate on a project is going to be really helpful. All of our students have their own way of looking at the world and they have their own expectations of what success means to them. So us trying to collectively kind of as an industrial era society try to bring them up to the same standard I think is wrong. I think we need to create an environment that enables the students to pick and choose what they want to learn and what they need to learn in order to complete the tasks or to deal with the challenges that they're, that they're facing. We always begin with research and we let the research to guide us through what the final solution should be. Along the way, we're building the skills, the technical skills of the students. So they're learning skills based on what they need to produce. Our main focus should be not on teaching them things, but teaching them how to learn. By teaching them how to learn, we will uh, make them adaptable. They will be able to tackle whatever comes their way, not just the things that we have taught them how to do. And this is, I think, is very important in our uh, culture, our environments. They need to reflect that and we need to create these type of uh, opportunities for the students.